Hello and welcome back to Sigma Dimensions. In this video, we're going to learn how to export IFC data to other types of formats. We don't have IFC Open Shell. You can just do pivot stuff. IFC Open Shell. Python. All right. So the first thing we need to do is create a brand new file. Then import IFC Open Shell and IFC Open Shell util element as element. Let's load in a file. For now, we'll only look at a random object in our file. Let's take in a first wall. We can get the express ID of this object by using the ID method. To get the express ID, we use the global ID parameter of this entity. If we'd like to know what class this object is, we can just do the isA method. The predefined type will be with element get predefined type wall. To get the name of this wall, we'll use the name parameter. To get the name of this level, we can just add name here. The type of this object is given by the get type function. To get the quantity sets, we can use the element get p sets, pass in your wall object as the first argument, and then you can pass in an optional argument, which is QTOs only equals true. To get the p sets, it's nearly the same, but you replace QTOs only with p sets only. Now let's erase all of this. And instead, we're going to write a simple dictionary where we can store all of this information for our walls. If we print this out for all the walls in our file, we won't really be able to read much. So what we're going to do is use pprint. Import pprint, set your first variable to pprint pretty printer, and then you can use the method pprint and print your stuff in here. So let's try it out. Python tutorial dot pi and we could not open the file for reading because I don't actually have a file. So let's try this out. Python tutorial dot pi. Okay, sweet. So this prints out a really nice layout showing us uh, the basic information we needed, as well as the property sets and the quantity sets. So we're getting every quantity set and the individual quantities of this quantity set. Now that we have this, what we could do is uh, put this in a function. Here we go. So we'll have the get objects data by class, pass in the file, and also the class type. In that way, we'll be able to retrieve the objects of each class type, of the class type, loop through them to get this information, and return a dictionary of data. If we'd like to print this out, we can try it out now. And yeah, as you can see, we have exactly the same as earlier. If we were to do IFC building element, we would get all the building elements we have in our file. Okay, that wasn't so hard, was it? Now, what we can do is export all this data to JSON. And to do so, we're going to change this function ever so slightly. So let's turn this into a list rather than a dictionary. So we'll be appending all this data, which is also a dictionary. But yeah, we'll be returning a list rather than a dictionary now. Get rid of all of this and import JSON and do with open, choose a file path. I'm going to put it into my models folder and call it test JSON. And since we'll be writing, we'll do it with a W, then as file. So the data we're going to 
JSON dump the data we have into our file. And now if we execute this, I've never run my file path. And let's see if it was created and it was indeed created. Great. So we're going to now export this data to CSV. And again, we're going to change this function slightly. Because when we're going to export to CSV or to a pandas data frame, we need a list of attributes. And the attributes will be dependent on what we retrieve within these quantity sets. So what we can do is create a variable called vsets, cut that, put it here, same for the QTOs, and we'll be replacing this with that, and QTOs with QTO. Now, for every piece set and QTOs, we need to, to, to get our column names, which will be the property set and the property name within our properties. So for that, we're going to create a very easy function that we're going to call add set attributes. So before writing anything, let's create an empty set where we're going to store all these attributes. And our function will be something like this. So for every piece of name and piece of data and piece of items, the property name and piece of data will be adding to the piset attributes the uh, format which will be something like this so we're going to add the piset name and we'll do a dot and then we'll put in the property name Let's write this as at piece of attributes. So for every for every piece set that we retrieve for this object, we'll also be adding the piece set attributes to our set over here. And in that way, we'll be able to ret to return in this function not only the object's data, but also the piece set attributes. We can then write data and attributes. And since we have a, a set, we'll be returning this instead. Let's put this up here. So let's try and print all the attributes we get here. P set is not defined. Okay, all right, so we get a list of all the P sets in the format we said, the name of the P set, dot, and then the property name. We also have all these attributes that we need. So to distinguish between all this, we're going to write this as P set attributes. So we have our data ready and we have our attributes ready. What's left to do? is actually write this to pandas. Pandas data needs to be in a slightly different format than what we've created earlier. So unfortunately, we're going to have to loop again for our uh, data object. And here we'll create an empty row. And for each attribute in attributes, the value will be retrieved with a function that we're going to create in a second. 
object data at the entity and we'll append this value to our row and then the pandas data needs a tuple rather than a list so we'll append that as a tuple and then if we import pandas that's pd and write data equals pd data frame from records data columns attributes should be able data frame should be able to print the data frame in our console now this function doesn't yet exist so we're going to create it now so in order to get the attribute value from this dictionary so maybe sometimes we have to fetch maybe sometimes we don't have to fetch so we're going to get different scenarios so we first need to plug in the object data the attribute we're looking for and we know that if we don't have a dot then it's a normal attribute well it's not a p set or quantity set so we'll just return the object's data attribute instead if we do have a dot in the attribute then we can get the pset name as the attribute and by splitting this string with a dot and taking in the first part and so the property name will be the second part now if the pset name is in the object data property sets, we're going to look at its keys only. So if the prop name, and I misread this, so if the prop name in the object data property sets, is it name keys then we can re return the value of this property now if it doesn't we'll return none now we'll just copy all this and replace it by quantity set. Otherwise, we'll return none. Now that we have this function, we can use it on here and we can execute this. So let's try it out. And it didn't work. because I miswrought express ID. Let's write it in the same way. And here we go. Now, this is for all building elements, which is not very practical, is it? Because we're getting a lot of empty values. It would be smarter to just get one data frame per object type. So we're getting a very clean panda data frame here. We wanted to export to CSV. It's just as easy as doing data frame to CSV and specifying in a path. So I'm going to call this dot CSV, and this time I won't print this, and I'll just print execute. And there is no such file. Why? Because I'm always wrong in my file path. And it's executed, and we have a nice CSV. Magnificent. 
can now filter and do all sorts of things. What if this time we wanted to save to Excel? We want to retrieve all the IFC building elements. And we want to write per sheet the data frame equivalent to this. So we'll be doing the writer equals canvas Excel writer. PD Excel writer in here will pass in the um, path path again. Let's start XLSX and we'll use an engine which is the Excel XLSX writer. Okay. For object class and data frame class. We would is a filter data frame where the class is this object class. Now we drop all the columns that are empty. So we're going to do it for the axis one. We'll drop them all. This data frame now can be written to a single sheet in our Excel. Sheet name will be the object class. And now, after we've linked to all these objects, we can save. Let's try it out. And here we go. So we have for every sheet our properties and our quantities.